done it not only once. I've been shot at a number of times in a number of places around the world, and every time God has miraculously saved my life. This is, this is God's Word. So John, it says not just John talking, it's not just the Holy Ghost yes. talking. God is talking. Eating up the stories that he would tell of his missions and ministry, and it would build my faith. So all of heaven is watching the earth all the time, looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. Welcome today to Terry Mize Ministries program, More Than Conquerors. As always, we're just honored and really, really thrilled that you would take your time to join with us and to spend some time here studying the Word of God, learning all of the things that, again, we need to have in the day that we live in. You need it for your family. We need it for ours. <laughs> we need to find out what God's Word says about the situations that each of us are in individually. And so with that in mind, we're going to talk about covenants and the fact that we are over in the realm of the kingdom of light, not in the kingdom of darkness, Absolutely. that we have an absolute covenant uh, based on the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We spent a, a whole program about a month ago talking about what the Word of God says about covenants. Absolutely. The death, Thank the God burial, for covenant. resurrection was covenant established Absolutely. for the New Testament believer. Well, we spent a lot of time on it because uh, not only did we do the program, you know, that I've been preaching on it around the country yeah. and around <laughs> other countries of the world, yes. uh, because God is a covenant God. That's right. And of course, we led Thank into God. it uh, in those programs a month or so ago based yeah. on what we did about the the, the five smooth stones. Right. You know, I tell you, we've had a lot of response. People want those Thankful. five smooth stones. That's been and, helpful uh, to uh, people. Oh, yeah. That, that it's the name, the blood, the word, the covenant. Right. And the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. And, you know, covenant's a legal term. I mean, right. lawyers use it still today. Right. Uh, homeowners Association use it. They, yeah. say, they say these are the covenants. Well, it just means right. a, an, an agreement, a right. contract. Or they say there are no covenants <laughs> in regard say, right. to this property. Exactly, exactly. I was amazed at that. And so uh, God, has, is, is, as we brought out before, and I'll do it again, that, that God is a covenant God. Right. That His covenants are always everlasting. That's so they're, wonderful. They're, they're not, they have no time <laughs> limit on them. There's no yes. expiration date. They're right. deathless. Once mm. he issues a covenant, it's still in effect. That's right. The yeah. one he issued to, to Abraham in Genesis 17 is still going today. Yes. Because he said, Abraham, this covenant is between me and you right. and your seed after you in their generations for an everlasting wow. covenant. Hallelujah. He didn't say it's a three-month covenant or a six-year covenant. Right, right. He said it's everlasting. Everlasting So it's still going covenant. on today, which the Apostle Paul makes us very much aware of in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29, when he right. said, if you, belong to Abraham, if you belong to Christ, yes, then you're Abraham's, Abraham's seed, seed and heirs according to the promise or Hallelujah. according to the covenant. So uh, if you're born again today, if you, you belong to Jesus, then you are Abraham's seed. And all right. those covenants and promises God made to Abraham right. are good for you today in your generation. It's an everlasting covenant. So, so anyway, they're, 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 they're deathless. They're timeless. They have no expiration date. They'll always be bloody. God's right. a blood covenant God. Every yes. covenant with God is a blood covenant. That's right. Uh, every, everyone through the Bible, he cuts a blood covenant. Right. Uh, and, and then they're they're uh, multi generational. I said multi generational because they go from one child to another child to another child. That's he right. said your seed and their seed after them. Right. So your kids and your kids' right. kids and your kids' kids' kids and you know <laughs> uh, and and they transcend uh, t uh, the the testament. They they go from Old Testament to New Testament. Right. So they don't have to they don't have to stop because of because we've changed right. from Old Testament to New. They're right. still good today. So uh, God, God's a covenant a God, and He yeah. says about Himself that He's the faithful God. 
yes. that keepeth covenant. That keepeth covenant. You know, he cut a covenant. covenant. Uh, he cut one covenant, and he said, uh, I swore by myself. Right. <laughs> because there is no higher. There is no higher. You know, you see, you watch TV shows today, and somebody says, well, I swear on my, my children. I swear on my mother's grave. I swear on my mother's eyes. I, I swear by this. I swear by that. God said, no, there's just not anything higher around, so I just swear by myself. <laughs> You know, I swear on me, and, and that's pretty. That's, that's so pretty. Awesome. That's pretty tall cotton. There. Yeah, no, that is. That's but, right. But God it's is wonderful. a covenant God. He said, the, "I'm the faithful God, right, that keepeth covenant." The last thing God's ever going to do is break a covenant, right. So uh, we we talked a lot about about covenants, and and uh, so you and I were talking about just driving out to do the to do the program, right. Uh, that we 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 like covenants. We're we're about the covenant. Right. And uh, once God cuts a covenant with you, you can you can take it to the bank. No, and that that's so marvelous. And He tries, you know, in all of the things that He said and promised throughout the Word of God, all the way from Genesis in through Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, all through the Old Testament, and then of course the ultimate New Testament covenant, once and for all, sure. Hebrew says, sure. was the death, burial, and resurrection Absolutely. of the Lord Jesus Christ from the rainbow uh, with Noah, from yep. another, you know, the, the, the covenants that he's cut with different families throughout right. the Old Testament. All the things that we see in the Word of God is that uh, a man, uh, a family was blessed because who they cut a covenant with. No, oh, absolutely. You know, and you know, being a missionary, that's always been something very real to me because uh, all tribal people use covenants. Right. You know, you go all You've through Africa, all the yeah. tribes use covenants. They have blood covenants. They cut, right. they cut, you know, themselves and mix it with mix it with uh, another guy's blood and then their blood right. brothers, or they put right. it in a in a cup and they mix it together and drink it. They're blood brothers. Right. And uh, that covenant's a big, big, big deal. And the covenant says, whatever, whatever, whatever you have belongs to me, and whatever right. I have belongs to you. It says that your enemies are my enemies, and your friends are my friends. Right. You know, a lot of times I'll say that in churches. You know, like uh, many times when a pastor dies or a minister dies, mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, they'll they'll ask me to come in and do the funeral, or come in and and preach at the church right after that, That's just right. kind of set things in order in an apostolic anointing, and. Uh, and I'll make if the wife is going to continue the ministry, if the widow is going to continue right. that. I, you've heard me say it many, many times. And say now, now look, we're in covenant with her. Right. Just because her husband's gone, she is now the pastor, and we're right. in covenant with her, which means her friends are our friends, right. and, and her enemies are yes. our enemies. So if you cause trouble, I've heard you say if that. If you come so in here often. and try to cause trouble with this right. widow, when you come in here and try to do her harm and push right. her out of the way, you're going to have me to deal with. Because <laughs> I'm going to be here pretty quick, and you're going you're going to have me and and other covenant related people here because we we honor the covenant. Right. Well, and it's like you know, in in regard to widows on that topic, is that God said in His Word there, you know, in Proverbs, there's so many things. That, Throughout the Word of God, where it says He makes secure the boundaries of the widow. Oh yeah, God. It, I mean, widows are a big deal to God. It is, and it's a it, it's a covenant dynamic that He's going to take care of that widow, oh, especially absolutely. a woman. Absolutely. You know, and it is an amazing thing to me, Terry, how detailed these covenants are, and how detailed the Lord is in laying these things out for us to realize that if we'll a covenant with Him, co-labor with Him, partner with Him. Right. If we accept the partnership, the covenant, if we believe in right, our heart, right, right. which we started out on one program talking about Romans 10, believing in the heart, confessing with the mouth. Absolutely. Then we be, we are we enter into a covenant based on the Word of God, the Word of faith. Right. Paul said, which we preach. So that within itself is we're going to covenant with the Lord to preach the Word of faith. Well, of course. Based on the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, absolutely. But uh, you know that's why that, that that's one reason we started. Jackie and I started, and you and yes. I are continuing, yes. uh, JMICF, or Jackie right. Mize International right. Children's Foundation, right. because the Bible says, the Word says, and we call ourselves Word people, Word people, Word of Faith people, uh, the, the, the Word says, Old Testament and New, that the church has to take care 
right. of widows and orphans. It's right. not your. It's not a choice. Right. You don't get a choice. You don't get a vote. You don't get an opinion. God <laughs> says right. you take care yeah. of the fatherless. Yeah. That's the orphans and the yeah. widows. And the widows. And and so uh, we're directed to do that. And you you miss God if you don't. In fact, if you're a Christian today and you're not helping with missions, you're not helping with with widows, you're not helping with orphans, then you are you are missing some of the benefits yes. uh, and some of the commandments that God's given to you, and therefore you're missing the benefits of, of being obedient to God. That's right. Because taking care of widows and orphans is a big, big deal with Almighty God. Well, and and two, I want to I want to say this on behalf of of widows and pastors, of which I have been both, and and realizing that even if a widow in your church and and Paul explains that that let the family first right. he said if step she's got up family then let them and, step and let up. them step up and begin to take care of the widow, but the church. I always still felt the church had still an obligation to um, come alongside to make sure mm -hmm. that those needs are met. Sure. That 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 widow, regardless of her age or or where she is right. in life, that there was an oversight right. that still need to be managed by the church. We don't just take our hands off because a family is maybe wealthy or the husband left the widow. Uh, provided for, mm -hmm. we still want to be there as um, a, a sounding board, sure, uh, sure. the ability to to minister on levels that maybe nobody thought of. Mm -hmm. I always thought, um, well, even a protectorate, because yes. uh, she might be elderly, she might be vulnerable, yes, uh, she might be susceptible to people cheating her out of her money, or yeah, or, 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 or coming in and just bullying her around and taking over her right. household, right, where she's just a prisoner in her own house and. You know, the church needs to step up and, and, and see to it that uh, right. we're uh, doing what the Bible tells us to do. Yeah, and that we're sensitive to those dynamics that are in there because it's a covenant dynamic mm -hmm. that we answer to God mm -hmm. for to watch for people's souls generally, yes. even in the ministry, and that we're to run the wolves off corporately. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so, it, it, much more so, like you and Jackie felt to do on behalf of widows and orphans. Sure. You know, a lot of my preacher friends, uh, our preacher friends, feel the same way we do about right. about uh, uh, to even go a step further. Yes. And to take care of ministers. Right. Because so many times ministers have given their whole lives for yes. the ministry. Yes. Given their whole lives for the for the church or the ministry or whatever. And then many of them don't have any insurance. They don't have any retirement right. plan. They don't have any 401k. They right. don't have any of that. Right. And so, uh, so when he die, if he just dies suddenly, right. then she, what happens to her? Exactly. All of a sudden, she's not the pastor's wife anymore. All of a sudden, she's not, uh, you know, I mean, I, I was part of a big ministerial organization for years that I helped start along with Brother Hagen and Brother Copeland, and Brother, Brother Osteen. There was like nine of us that started this great the Word of Faith organization. Um, and uh, and I, I implemented that into our bylaws and, 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 and constitution there, that we, we would take care of the widows or have to take right. care of the widows because uh, l l let's say she's married to a board member uh, and so every time we have a meeting, then she's there. Right. She's in the green room. She's in the hospitality room. She's at all the meetings. She's she's with her husband. She's with right. the other husbands and wives, and 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 we're just all one big happy family. And then he dies, and then all of a sudden she disappears. Right. Nobody invites her to the green room anymore. Nobody <laughs> invites her to the hospitality yeah. room anymore. That's thoughtless. <clears throat> and it's up to us to see to it that that doesn't happen. Exactly. That we that we t uh, look in on that. Right. And uh, and that we're we're doing what God wants us to do. But anyway, I started to say ministers take it even a step further than that, as we do, uh, and say, well, even even ministers that get older, that that are retirement age, they can't minister right. anymore. Right. Uh, well, what's going to happen to them? Right. And so I've made a commitment, as you well know, to several ministries that right. will just take care of them for the rest of their lives. Right, right. <laughs> and um, in, in, in fact, it was really funny. Years and years ago, I, I told Jackie, I said, you know, at some point, I said, uh, as everybody gets older, I said, there are just some people that are friends and ministers that, that I intend to take care of for the rest right. of their lives. And I named off about right. five couples. Right. And and oddly enough, you and Dean were one of those. That's even though right. Y'all were doing well and had a great church and had money and everything right, else. But, right. But somehow that was in my heart, and I said, "We're going to take care of Dean and Renee," you know. And of course, now Dean's gone, and you're married to me, so I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm working on doing that. Uh, but but also, you know, there was another couple, uh, and 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 both of them are passed away now. That's and right. And there's another couple, and both of them are passed away now. Right. And then there was my spiritual father. Wayne Myers, who's now 101 years old, 
it was him and Martha, and now right. Martha's passed Martha's away uh, several years ago, yeah. and that's just Wayne. Yeah. And at 101, I mean, you know, I'm still going to support him the, exactly. the rest of his life. That's right. And uh, weekly, I mean, my son Lynn said to me one day because he's I was our administrator and ran and took care of the ministry and ran right. the money. Right. And he said to me one day years ago, he said, "Dad, son, I want to ask you a question." He said, "I, I know I know the answer to it, but I want to ask. I want to hear you say it." He said, "If Brother Wayne passes away before uh, Miss Martha does, he said, uh, what are we going to do with the money we've been sending to?" To them, mm -hmm. and I said, "Well, we're just still going to send it." Right. He said, "Well, I knew that was the answer, but I wanted to hear you say it." And I said, "Oh no!" I said, "If Wayne passes away first, we'll we'll take care of her the rest of her life." Right. And I said, "And if she she goes, then we'll take, take care of him care, the rest of his life. Wayne. And if neither one of them go, we'll take care of both of them." Yes, Hallelujah. And, uh, and, Thankfully, and so, you still are. And, and there's several ministers, good men of God, friends of mine. I, I guess I won't name them because maybe they don't want it known, but that they take care of a lot of people. They've right. just made it a point to say, "Well." Uh, in fact, we were talking to one of our dear friends uh, uh, just a couple of Sundays ago, uh, right? And uh, he he told he told us he said, you know, I'm still taking care of a a, a missionary widow lady, yeah. You know, and he said, I determined I'd take care of her the rest of her life. I supported her and her husband when they were in the mission fields, and and then he passed That's away. The so church. then I then I supported her until the day she died. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and but you know, that, that that's the way it should be. That's the way the church should be. And, and we've seen ministers do that. You know, right. I've, I've watched several ministers that just swoop in and, and say, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to see to it that that's they're right. not forgotten, they're, that they're taken care of. And that's, that's the way it ought to be. I want to say this uh, right now, just, just for the, the sake of everyone uh, working to get a larger view of who we are as the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. that when, and over there in Deuteronomy chapter 4, it's a spectacular, Deuteronomy chapter 4 lists all the wonderful things that God is trying to do through Israel. And it's an amazing statement in there, Terry, where the Lord is talking to Israel about their relationship with Him on the Word of God. And I find it stunning <laughs> that the Lord says here in that chapter, He says, so keep them and do them what for them. What verse the, you at? I'm in uh, Deuteronomy 4, verse 6. So keep them and do them, for that is your wisdom and your understanding mm -hmm. in the sight of the peoples. That means the peoples all around Israel. <laughs> that means the whole world will see Israel as a people. And he said, when they hear all these statutes, will say, surely this is a great nation. Yeah, I love this that. great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there who has a God so near to them as the Lord our God is to us in all things for which we call upon him? And what large and important nation has statutes and ordinances, covenants, right. So upright and just as all this law which I set before you today. No, that's powerful. I mean, that ought to make you fall on your face before God, <laughs> that you are in something so big right. and so powerful exactly and so right. noble and so dignified and high class that that God would say that's how we're supposed to act, that we are big enough to take care of the widows, yes. the orphanage, yes. orphans the elderly. We are big enough yes, yes. to maintain people's help and lifestyle through what the Word of God tells us. Because we're in the kingdom, we no, have absolutely. not just one covenant, but covenants yes. that, are, that are combined in one covenant, but very detailed all through the Word yes. of God are the promises of God to the people of God, and we're to be seen as a large and important sure. group of people. Well, you've heard me say for many years that that uh, when there's a disaster, the church yes. is the first one there. First one there. And you also heard me say that when, whenever uh, uh, there is a disaster and right. you want to give money, don't give it through these normal weird uh, <laughs> organizations. Yes, give it through right. the church. If you right. give it through the church, right. it'll get to where it's supposed to go. It's going. Somebody's going to hand one deliver of these that usually. You know, then, yeah. then it may or may not get there. Or if you give it through the government, it really won't get there. It really won't get there. No. I joke. remember whenever uh, in 2010, Haiti had that horrible earthquake right. that killed uh, hundreds of thousands of people, uh, maybe half a million. They still don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, people went into eternity, Renee, forever. That's right. And uh, and so the, the church wow. was the first one there. 
Yes. Uh, I had money there. I mean, I had money there and on the ground within hours. Right. Uh, uh, the Israeli uh, army was there and built the hospital first. <laughs> That's right. They were there first. They were there first. Uh, I saw Geraldo Rivera show up on the scene and, and he's just grabbed a microphone, pushing his hair out of the way. And he said, oh, it's Geraldo Rivera. And I just got here and we're reporting on this. And as he's talking, I was watching him on TV. I was in Mexico. I was preaching to pastors. Right. And I was watching this and hate to because I was keeping track of it because I knew we needed to help. And uh and all of a sudden, I saw Paul Osteen, Dr. Paul Osteen. God bless. Uh, John Osteen's son and, 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 and John Osteen Joel family. Osteen's big brother. Yes. And he's a medical doctor. Yes. And I said, well, that's Paul Osteen. That's Paul Osteen. Walks <laughs> out there behind Geraldo. <laughs> and then Geraldo's still talking. And yeah. in a few minutes, Paul walks back by again. Yeah. And so Geraldo turns around and says, hey, you, I saw you over here. I said, are you, are you a doctor? He says, oh, yeah, I'm Dr. Paul Osteen from Lakewood Church. And we've got a, a tent and a hospital set up triage, over here doing triage. Set up. And, and it's set up and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, it's the church. And here, and here, the, the all yes. the organization, the government organization, <laughs> hadn't done anything yet, you know. And, That's right. and yet, here the church was there. The church was there. And then there. George Bush, who was who was not the current president at the time, he was ex president, right. and Bill Clinton, who was ex president, right. the two of them actually got together right. and raised millions upon millions and millions of dollars for Haiti. Right. Uh, but it never got there. It never got there. I mean, it got to Haiti, but then it never got to the people. Who knows yeah. what happened to it? Right. And, and that's what happens so many times when you give through the government. So you give to a government right. uh, because the government is corrupt. And so you send it to these foreign governments and, the, and the, they just take it and take it and take it. And right. you, you don't know what happens to that money when you send it to these different countries. Right. Uh, because every, every country is corrupt. Every government right. is corrupt, including right. the United States, including Israel. I mean, every, every government there is has got some corruption in it because they're not the church. Exactly. But if you want something to get where you want, where it needs to go, yes. you give it through the church. That's right. And that's what we've done with JMICF and with right. our charitable organization, our humanitarian aid. Uh, we always take it ourselves to give it through the church. Uh, and, uh, and you know, I, I took an offering right there that day out of, out of, from Mexican pastors and said almost $30,000 right. uh, the same day. Had it in Haiti the same day. That's right. And uh, just uh, the well, church. They, you know, there's a great organization. I think it's great that we see on TV all the time. Everybody sees it. It's called Tunnel to Towers. And I think right. it's a good organization. Right. Uh, it, it's it's a guy whose brother was a fireman in New York City and was killed, on, or right. died in, uh, uh, September 11, 9-11. And so he started this organization called Tunnel to Towers. And, and so he builds homes for veterans that are that are come come home uh, uh, with special needs. Right. Uh, we used to say handicapped. I don't think we say that anymore, but they come home unable to work or, or even firemen or policemen that get hurt. Right. And, and it's a good organization. I mean, I, I think it's great. Anything I've checked about it, it seems to be legit. Uh, but he even makes the statement, I did his name Stiller. Uh, Something. Anyway, yeah. he gets on TV and he makes a statement. He's very proud of the statement. And he said, we give 95% of everything that comes in. Uh, he said, we keep 5% for administration and 95% goes exactly where you, and that's very honorable because a right. lot of places keep 30%, 40%, 50%. Right. But you know, with JMICF, with our organization, we've never kept a thin dime. Right. I mean, we, we, we give 100% 100%. of what people give to us goes to where, to where they send it. Well, but, and, I, uh, and, and Franklin Graham, you Franklin know, Graham Franklin Graham from Samaritan's Purse. Yeah, uh, Kenneth Copeland does an outstanding oh job with, uh, 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 I mean, they've uh, got boots on the yeah. aid. They've got boots Lakewood on the ground. Church. Immediately. Lakewood Church. Yeah. There's lots of churches that we don't even right. know about. But right. the church is always, always going to be there first and always going to put the money where it belongs. Right. And I don't it's, know how we got on this today. We're well, almost out of time, but it's, yeah. it's good. But but it, but the church needs to learn how to be the church because you're covered. Your life is covered through the covenants the covenant, that yeah. we have, and we're going to talk about this here a, a little bit more later on. But we just got we just got to get get everybody thinking higher, no, thinking absolutely. bigger, absolutely. thinking you know God can do more, and he if he's got more people he can do more. No, absolutely. And the value of your life hooked up with the other members of the body of Christ in your local church. It's absolutely stellar, Terry, what the kingdom of God and the people can do because we have a covenant that will provide for us yes, we do. and help us provide for others. God bless you all. We love you. And one more time, you are more, more than, than conquerors. Bye-bye.
Now, I want to talk to you just a minute about a famous old preacher, a real hero of mine. He's in heaven today. Been been gone for quite a while. But his name was Oswald J. Smith. He loved missions and wanted to be a missionary. That's all the man ever wanted to do is be a missionary. But he couldn't do it. He tried. He went overseas over and over again. And uh, finally, he, God got it across to him to pastor a church in Canada and quit and do missions, but quit trying to go overseas and be a missionary. And so uh, there was a church in Toronto that needed a pastor. When he got there, they said, now look, we're deep in debt and we want you to preach Sunday morning and we want you to preach Sunday night. We want you to mention the debt, talk about the debt and raise an offering to, to deal with the debt. And so he got up Sunday morning and preached and he preached on missions to everybody's surprise and never one time mentioned the debt. They said, why don't you stay over and preach next Sunday? Now listen, we're deep in debt. We want you to take up an offering. We want you to get this debt taken care of. And so he preached Sunday morning on missions, never mentioned the debt. Called an afternoon meeting for 2.30, preached on missions, never mentioned the debt. Preached Sunday night on missions, never mentioned the debt. For some crazy reason, the board decided to hire him as their pastor. And so he preached for a solid year Never one time mentioned the debt, preached on missions every time. But because they gave to missions and believed in missions, God paid their debt off. So at the end of the year, he got his report from his his bookkeeper, his CPA, and the bookkeeper said, you gave seven times more to missions than you spent here at home. And I want to read you something that he said that I've lived by and I've preached around the world. He said, number one, if I refuse to give anything to missions this year, I practically cast a ballot in favor of the recall of every missionary from the field. Number two, if I give less than I've given before, then I favor a reduction in the forces of missionaries proportionate to my reduced contributions. Number three, if I give the same as I've always given, every year give it the same, then I favor holding the ground already won, but I oppose any forward movement. My song is hold the fort. Forgetting that the Lord never intended his army to take refuge in a fort, all his soldiers are commanded to go. And number four, he said, if I increase my offering beyond former years, then I favor an advance, an advance movement in the conquest of new territory for Christ. And you know, I took that to heart when I was a missionary and all these years I've been in the ministry. I mean, all these years uh, at the beginning of every year, I tell the Lord, I'm going to give more this year than I gave last year. I'm going to give more this year than I gave last year. And we've been able to do that now for over half a century. And God has blessed it and blessed it and blessed it. It's proven. And uh, I invite you to get involved in giving to missions as well. And if you'd consider, prayerfully consider, partnering with Renee and I, partnering with Terry Mize Ministries as we go around the world, then I promise you this, I will pray for you. Renee will pray for you. Our staff will pray for you every day, every day, every day. And according to God's word, he will bless you and minister to you and keep his word to you. I believe you'll find missions giving is going to be your greatest asset and your greatest return on your giving that you've ever had in your life. God bless you. We love you. You're more than conquerors. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth. with the Holy, Holy Ghost, Ghost. With power, who <laughs> yes. was about doing good, good. Not, bad, not bad, good, right. and healing right. all. A devil, the longest word in the Bible, all healing all. Yes, that were oppressed Pressed of, of the, the devil. devil. That tells us God's good, Jesus is good, yeah. the Holy Ghost, Ghost is, is good, good, and the devil's bad. <laughs> the devil's the oppressor, and yeah. that, that answered a lot of questions. No, for it does. They told us in church that yeah, sometimes God and the devil switch places. Yeah, the they devil did together. the good stuff, and God did the yeah. bad stuff. Yeah, and that's just not true. Never. Jesus went about doing good.